about ready to begin. Good evening and welcome to finding out more about A-levels at HSDC. My name is Jane Golds and I'm the Director of Marketing and Admissions. So thank you for joining us this evening. If you have any questions this evening, if you look at the bottom of the Zoom page, you will see a box that says Q and A. Can you please pop your questions in there because my team are behind the scenes working hard answering those questions for you. We also have a live Q and A at the end of the event. So any questions at all, please use your Q and A link and we'll answer those throughout the evening as well as at the end of the event today. So I have a great pleasure to hand you over to Mike Gaston, the Principal and CEO of HSDC, to start off this evening. Over to you, Mike. Good evening, everyone. Hello, and Thank you, Jane, for that introduction. And indeed, thank you to everyone for coming along virtually to find out more about the college and indeed, in many ways, to reassure you that uh, the decision that your son and, and daughter has made uh, has been the right choice. As Jane said, my name is Mike Gaston uh, and the principal and CEO and delighted to uh, speak with you this evening. What I really want to talk about is the opportunities and support available to your son and daughter on their A-level programme here at the college, uh, whether that be at our Alton uh, or Haven campus. I would say that we're an amazing college and students come from a large variety of schools and geographical areas. So both Haven and Alton really do feel like mini university campuses. Studying with us is a, an excellent transition from school to university or full-time employment. We are a top performing college, have been for more than 40 years. We know what we do and we're specialists in it. Working with 16 to 19 year olds is what we do all day, every day. We also get fantastic results. Nearly 100% pass rates for A-level, high 80% A-star to C in the extended project qualification, and really good at value added. All our students make good progress and realize their potential, whatever their starting point in terms of GCSEs. We offer a large portfolio of A-level subjects, and this variety and choice coupled with teaching expertise enables our uh, uh, students to uh, uh, get to their, to their destination. We pride ourselves in supporting students uh, in their ambition and uh, support them to reach their goals and fulfill their dreams, whatever it is that they want to progress uh, uh, to, onto. I talked about that wide choice of, of A-level subjects. Our students do go on to top universities and achieve great success in a variety of careers, including medicine, journalism, law, accountancy, sport and the arts. I think what your son and daughter will find at HSDC is other motivated and aspirational students with a vast array of backgrounds and experiences with one thing in common. They all want to study at one of the best A-level colleges in Hampshire. We are a welcoming place to study. Uh, um, around 1400 students on both campuses, big enough to provide a full range of options both for courses and extracurricular activities and friendship groups, but small enough to have a good sense of community. We really pride ourselves on uh, your son and daughter, all of our students, not simply being a number, but us knowing them by name. Teachers know their students well and monitor closely, but we respect that students want to grow up and develop their own independence, which is a key part of transitioning to university. We expect students to drive their own progress and support and challenge them to do that. Many of our facilities are university standard, uh, example, our science labs, but all A-levels are informed with industry knowledge and understanding of practices, which are not only enriches the, the curriculum and keeps it up to date, but also ensures that students are well aware of their career pathway. In short, we offer your son and daughter a first-class education. If you have any Q&A, the live Q&A at the, the end of the event, please do send in your questions as we go through the presentation by the chat box. And I look forward to seeing you in person soon. But for now, I'll, I'll hand over to Nicola, one of my assistant principals. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mike. So, um, to begin the journey with um, Haven't and Alton Colleges, uh, your students, sorry, your, your um, children, uh, sons and daughters, first of all, have some getting ahead work, which is live on the website. So these are activities um, set by teachers for their particular subjects, and they're good engaging activities to um, keep everybody busy over the summer and prepare them for the September start. And we will make sure that these uh, materials and resources that the students develop feed into the first lessons of the course. So it's a good starting point so that they know what to expect and how to um, start well. Um, and then the next event in the calendar, of course, is the GCSE Results Day, Thursday, August the 18th uh, this year. And immediately after that morning of results, um, we begin enrolment interviews on both campuses. So your um, son or daughter will receive or have already received an invitation appointment time for their enrolment. Important to remember that it's not an interview, um, it's a discussion just to make sure that the courses that they chose as application are the ones for them. Um, it may be affected by their GCSE results. Maybe they've done stunningly well in one particular subject and actually want to carry that on uh, into at a level standard of um, study. Um, or maybe they've missed um, in some cases, in which case they might want to rethink the choices that they've made. Either way, um, we're here to have that discussion and to make sure that the courses that they do actually enroll onto really um, excite them and make them feel pleased and happy to be here. Also at enrolment, we will be asking students who want to join into competitive sports, join the team sports, and um, also enroll at this point. And in that way, we can make sure that their timetable fits uh, around that, those sports fixtures. And then the first day at college will be in the morning, um, 10 o'clock Wednesday, the 7th of September. We will have a morning of induction, um, which will include a tour of the campus and getting to know the different processes and different people. They'll be with their tutor for that. And then it, from lunchtime onwards, they're straight back, straight into actual lessons and the proper timetable. Um, however, induction isn't just a morning. <laughs> Induction is actually a term long process um, and particularly so at the moment with um, students having suffered in different varying extensions um, with the pandemic. So we will spend the whole term and in actual fact longer than that if needs be, making sure that students do settle in well, that they develop the study skills that they need and so on. More of that later. Um, now, we students will have had the opportunity to discuss at application what they want to study, and then again at enrolment, and then they start on their courses. What happens if they realise they've made a terrible mistake and all three courses aren't quite right for them, and in fact they want to change one of them? That's, um, we, we accommodate that uh, as far as we can. And we have a process that we call switch, don't ditch, <laughs> as in don't ditch your education, but instead switch to something which really does motivate you. And we will manage that process in the first few weeks of term. OK, um, I think I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Pete Budd. Thank you, Nicola. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, so uh, yes, we have um, a timetable which is based on three one and a half hour lessons per subject, uh, which is based on a grid timetable system. Um, and then students have a tutorial as well. Um, we have a later start to the day, and this was based on some recent research with Oxford University into sleep study and uh, the teenage brain. Uh, but it has practical benefits as well, um, as students benefit from uh, a bit of increased travel time, which is perhaps particularly useful um, at the start of uh, students uh, studies with us when perhaps they're having to travel from further afield uh, to. Uh, we have 90 minute lessons um, and they allow us to teach topics and lessons in depth, um, ensuring that students have plenty of time for interaction and discussion with their with their peers. Um, and it also helps with practical subjects, so performing arts or science um, and so on as well. So they have three one and a half hour lessons uh, per week per subject. Um, students timetables will vary according to their subject combination. They'll have a bespoke timetable um, and 
that means that there'll be days when perhaps they don't have the first lesson of the day or equally they, they perhaps finish a little early in terms of uh, taught lessons, but that means that they have study time during the week. Um, they don't have to be on site, um, but we very much expect them to be working outside lesson time, and I'll come on to that a little bit more uh, in a moment. But um, therefore, all students have their own timetables uh, that are spread across the, the five days, um, and they'll have a mixture of taught time and some study time. <clears throat> And in terms of what uh, your sons and daughters can expect then um, from A-level lessons, um, uh, it's of course going to vary according to subject um, and some teaching will be very different and um, quite uh, reasonably in art from English or business and so on. But what they can expect is really challenging content. Um, A-levels are and should be challenging so they can expect to be intellectually stimulated um, in the subjects that they've chosen um, to take on to, to advanced level. Um, and there's a real focus on flipped learning and independent study. So many lessons will build on homework, whether that's reading or preparatory work. Um, so we expect students just to arrive at lessons being well prepared for the learning that they're about to undertake. Um, Google Classroom is embedded within lessons. Um, so for example, on NEA or coursework as it used to be called in some subjects, students will be working on their, their tasks um, and, uh, and students will be able to access their work live um, too. So lessons won't be hugely dissimilar um, from, uh, from GCSE study, but um, there'll be some, uh, some really exciting things that they'll be involved in. Um, and we continually build on that work that's done outside the, the classroom. And day levels really are a blend of independent study and, and classroom um, teaching. And and that really is the, the recipe uh, for success. And moving on to homework and uh, an independent study. <clears throat> Uh, so, thank you. So, homework and independent study is uh, is vital to student success. They should uh, complete uh, all homework on time and to a good standard, um, and it has such a huge and positive impact on uh, your sons and daughters' achievements and success with us. Um, There'll be times when they have more homework than others, perhaps in preparation for mock exams or around coursework time and so on. Um, but by and large, we expect students to be spending around about the same amount of time um, on, uh, on homework and independent study as they do in class. So essentially about four and a half hours um, per week on each subject. Um, and that could be a mixture of some revisions, some written homework tasks, um, non-examined assessment time. Um, but um, we do expect, therefore, that they are a full-time student with us and they're going to be working hard um, when they're not in class. Um, and independent study will be monitored and teachers will check homework. That will, of course, be through some uh, formal um, assessment of written work or through Google Classroom. Um, or, of course, by drawing on what students have done in lessons. That might be uh, checking their reading and checking their preparation through questioning at the beginning of lesson as, as well. But we hope that students are going to really enjoy their independent study, um, of course, um, working on those subjects that they've chosen to take at A-level. Um, and we really thank you um, as parents and carers for all your support in helping um, students to, uh, to work on uh, their independent study because it makes such a huge difference um, to their attainment um, and uh, we hope that they're going to really enjoy that aspect of their learning with us. Thank you very much Pete. So um, one of the differences um, between studying with us and some other colleges is that we make sure that tutors are also subject teachers. Um, so the, the students develop a really str strong and close relationship with their tutor um, and their tutor looks after their overall progression across all of the subjects. Um, they meet um, in tutor groups every week uh, for an hour um, and that is a split between uh, um, advice and guidance on study skills and so on but also one-to-ones. So every student, every tutee um, has a one-to-one -one with their tutor, making sure that they're enjoying their studies and making good enough progress um, at least every three weeks, roughly. Um, so, and in terms of your involvement and uh, ability to, to check and monitor that your students, um, your, sorry, your child's progress, uh, the tutor is the single point of contact. Of course, you will have um, correspondence with all the subject teachers as we go throughout the year, but the tutor is, the, is your main point of contact. Um, in terms of keeping you informed, as I say, the personal tutor is the main source of uh, information and uh, correspondence, um, but we also have an online system called ProPortal where you can see um, students' attendance, their target grades, 
you can see the way that they're reflecting on their learning and then also the way that the teachers have responded to those reflections and subject reviews. That's a constant um, available product online um, portal. But then in addition to that, twice a year, we have consultation evenings when you're welcome to come in and meet with each of the subject teachers as well as the tutor, who will be one of the subject teachers anyway. And then new for this year um, is the Google Guardian. So this gives parental access to um, the Google Classroom. And from that, you'll, you, you'll be sent sort of summaries of work that has been set, work that's outstanding, and any other whole class announcements that the teacher's making, just to help you keep an eye and understand really what your um, son or daughter's going through so that you can better support them. Okay, um, I call this slide, it's not all about exams, because it's really not all about exams. We're much more interested and um, concerned with growing uh, young people in, in, the, in the round, um, because that ultimately will produce a more successful um, life and career, but also ultimately it leads to better grades. But at the same time, we do have a focus on exams right from day one. It's really important that students, particularly those who've had some time at home through lockdowns, build the resilience and the confidence to achieve well in an exam hall at the end of the two years. So throughout the two years in a um, safe and um, stimulating environment, we will show students um, how to perform under pressure. We'll show, uh, we'll make sure that they understand assessment objectives uh, and the exam rubrics and the, the way in which to gain marks to support those grades. Um, and we will make sure that they develop the ability to perform well under timed conditions, because that is the dominant assessment um, method of A-levels. In addition to that, of course, as Peter's already referenced, there's coursework on a lot of A-levels, 20%, um, and some courses which are within the A-level programmes, such as criminology, for example, very popular course, um, has a much larger, so 50% proportion of coursework. But nonetheless, the ability to uh, perform well under pressure is a fantastic skill, not just for exams and A-level achievement, but actually for life and, and uh, performance in the workplace. So it isn't all about exams. We also um, want to provide our students opportunities for a really broad and rich range of extracurricular activities. These will be launched at the Freshers' Fair, um, 20th of September at Alton campus and 21st of September at the Haven campus, um, where all the different clubs and societies and sporting activities and team sports as well will be um, there on display with the students um, campaigning and promoting them and, that, and hoping that lots of um, new first years will join their courses, their clubs and societies. So we've split these different extracurricular activities into separate areas. We've got be active and be adventurous, competitive sports, but also turn up and play. There will be opportunity to um, do some sports, some exercise on both campuses every single day of the week. Um, archery is just at the Havant campus, um, but there's other options at the Alton campus, um, such as the fully equipped gym. Um, fitness classes on both campuses to be done um, at a time of the day when lessons are, are not scheduled, um, so students will be available. There's also Duke of Edinburgh um, and cadets for those who are interested in more outward bound activities. Um, and then also within that kind of theme of be active and be adventurous, lots of trips and visits going ahead. Um, the Spanish trip at the moment is actually in Mexico. We have some of our um, Spanish A-level students acting as translators, which is fantastic in Mexico. Um, physics visit to CERN, that's a joint trip actually between um, Havant and Alton. Um, the same with the history in Germany, in German trip to Berlin. We have politics trip to Washington, art trips to Amsterdam, um, and with um, developing relationships with a school in Switzerland, and that's going to give opportunity for a kind of exchange visit, which is really exciting. We're very chuffed with that. Um, thinking about the involved clubs and societies, the non-sporting side, 
there's a few, it's just a sample of the different options available, um, which students can sign up for in September at the Freshers' Fair. Just to pick out um, a couple, the Forensic Investigation Crime Scene Analysis um, is a new club that we're starting up post-pandemic, um, which, we're, which we're very excited about. It seems it's taught by um, Dr. Leslie Brewer, who's a chemist um, who has worked um, in the industry. Uh, and we, it looks at some high profile cases to illustrate how crime scenes are investigated and the role of the different agencies involved. Um, and students will then look at the scientific approaches used to analyze evidence. Clearly it ties quite well in with certain A-level subjects, but it's available to all um, and will also incorporate law and so on. So it's just one example. Um, there's another example, the Wilding Society. Um, we're rewilding both campuses and students are involved in that. Um, it's not looking too great at the moment because we're in the early stages, quite a lot of rubble and sort of empty soil, but next summer, it'll be amazing. Um, and we're also looking at um, planting trees and we've got the um, Hampshire and Isle of Wight um, Wildlife Society helping us. Um, and that will tie into the earth sciences, you know, measurement of carbon emissions, et cetera, um, in geography and so on. And then we have the Be Aspirational programme led, uh, led by Yvette Wands. And um, it is available to all students, all students who want to aim high. And it consists of a guest speaker series. Um, if students want to apply to Oxford or Cambridge, then we provide um, tutoring for that and coaching for admissions tests. Um, and then there's debating society, bar mock trial and research projects for example, working with postgrads in the Southampton University labs. So there's lots and lots of different activities available to all. The only entry requirement is that you like studying and you want to push yourself. Okay, I think I'm coming towards my last slide now. Um, transport, clearly, everybody know, needs to know how to get here. Um, transport links are really, really good. Um, if you want, more information about either financial support um, or information about the bus timetables for Alton um, and train timetables, more so for Haven't, and then just let us know and we'll make sure the available is uh, the information is available to you. It's also on our website. Okay. So we're now going to go to our live QA. Um, Sorry, can I just jump in, Nicola? So yes, <laughs> we've just we've got we're going to miss out Charlie otherwise. Oh, so sorry. Um, so <laughs> that's fine. If you want to stop sharing, we can come back over to me. Um, so just say thank you very much, first of all, to Mike, Nicola and Pete uh, for that explanation about everything. Um, apologies, we did give out the wrong date. So we did actually give you the A-level result date, which was in fact the 18th of August. Thank you to everybody who noted we've given out the wrong date. Don't worry, GCSE results day is definitely Thursday the 25th of August and enrolment starts just after that on that day. Now for enrolment, we've had lots of questions about enrolment and while I have a moment, you will all receive enrolment appointments through your students' email address. So you'll all receive individual appointments, they'll be emailed out to your students and you'll also have details on what to do if you can't make your enrolment appointment. And those will start straight after GCSE results day in the afternoon of the 25th of August. So our next presentation is pre-recorded as unfortunately Charlie couldn't be with us in person this evening and there is a hiss actually on the recording so please bear with us for the sound you might just have to um, turn your volume up a tiny bit but bear with us on that one but now I'd like to hand you over to Charlie Miller who is our head of student progress thank you very much good evening and welcome to this part of the presentation where we look at the student progress team so the Student Progress team are made up of a Health and Safeguarding Coordinator, Stroke RGM, Student Progress Mentors, who are curriculum-based and attached to a area, a Looked After Student Administrator, who is based in the Hub and is student-facing, a Looked After Student Coordinator, who is based at the South Downs campus, but coordinates and supports our Looked Afters and Care Leavers across all the campuses. And we will also have um, ca campus-based counsellors as well. So what we expect from our students to ensure that they are successful, 100% attendance, and if you can't attend, then please notify us. 
A commitment to achieving your target, these will be discussed and agreed with you in the first few weeks of college. This does of course include completing homework, so five hours a week per A level, or at least 10 hours for a vocational programme, working at or above your target grade. Exemplary behaviour, we are preparing students to behave as they would in the workplace, showing respect for others at all times and wearing none well. We also request, where possible, that young people do not work more than 20 hours a week. Nine out of 10 students who are spending up to 20 hours a week earning money can be detrimental for their studies. So what health and wellbeing support do we offer at the college? We offer emotional support for students and young people who are feeling stressed or anxious. If you have an ongoing issue in college or even outside of college, you can come and speak to us and we will direct you in the right direction or give you support. Ask for a referral to our college counselling service. We also have a sexual health clinic which runs on the college site every week. This is in conjunction with the NHS and they can provide free advice, testing and contraception. We have really strong links with another, a number of other agencies including iTalk, Off the Record and we've liaised with SEDIAS, police and social services. We have information and contact details for Parks, Mind and Beat, to name just a few. We support our young carers, young parents, looked after students and anyone with a protected characteristic that may need further support from us whilst completing college. In terms of the support available, your step one, if your young person needs some support, is to speak to their tutor if they're not at any immediate risk and they feel safe. If they want some support with reducing anxiety, um, they can access COOF, which is our online counselling service and has lots of amazing self-help resources. Step three, if a young person is still feeling overwhelmed, they can email their student progress mentor who they will meet within the first week or two of college, but be given their contact details within induction week. Or they can email wellbeing at hsdc.ac.uk to request a one-to-one -one meeting. Student progress mentors will prioritise students in crisis and please do email them to make an appointment. So step four, for young people who need urgent help who don't feel safe, they can speak to one of our safeguarding leads at college. You can find us based in or around the hub. All conversations are kept confidential and we will not tell parents unless we feel that the young person is at risk and is under the age of 18. The safeguarding coordinators are campus based, so you have Emma, Emma on the Alton campus, Mel at the Haven campus and Julie and Mary who share a job role on the South Downs campus. So careers is embedded into our curriculum and throughout tutorials. We have a number of resources such as Future You delivered by a team of qualified guidance advisors ensuring the development of careers and employability skills. Through careers and tutorial, we offer a number of uh, help, such as one-to-one, -one, dropping clinics, careers events, course choices, work experience, applying to HE, gap years, apprenticeships and CV writing. You can rely on support from your health and wellbeing team for many different situations, including welfare issues, physical problems, mental health, bereavement, sexual health, safeguarding or caring for someone. So please drop us an email at wellbeing at hsdc.ac.uk and we will be prepared for when you start and have the relevant people there to meet you and ensure your transition is safe and easy. It's really important that all of our students wear lanyards when they're on campus. These will be given out at enrolment. Please support us as a college by making sure your young person wears the lanyard every time they come on site. This is a safeguarding concern and is about supporting students to stay safe. Thank you for your time this evening and I look forward to meeting yourselves or your young people during enrolment. Thank you very much Charlie. Okay so now it's time for the live Q&A to begin and to host this I'm going to hand you over to Elle who's my marketing manager. So over to you Elle, thank you. Hi, thank you, Jane. Yes, I'm Al, the marketing manager. Um, we want to welcome back to Nicola, Mike and Pete again. And uh, we've just going to go through a few questions that have popped up through the question Q&A this evening. 
Um, so starting off with the first one with Nicola, that's okay. Um, so what happens if I don't meet the entry requirements for A-levels? Um, well, if it depends to what extent you've not met the entry requirements for A-levels. So basically, we need to have a talk. Um, if um, you come into enrolment with your GCSE achievements, then we'll take it from there and we'll discuss what the best options are. Um, it may be that you need to just change um, one of the subjects that you've chosen within your A-level programme, um, or maybe you actually a different type of course altogether might be better. And it might be that that's either um, still on the Alton campus, or if you're coming to study A-levels at the Havoc campus, then it may be that there's another course at the Southlands campus that would be better suited. But essentially, um, we'll have a discussion and we'll talk about what's best for you. Great, thank you, Nicola. Um, over to Mike, our uh, principal. So what sort of extracurricular opportunities are provided, please? Um, well, I think Nicola probably covered quite a bit of that on, on a couple of the slides on terms of being extraordinary uh, and a whole host of, of, of activities, including uh, um, Spanish students at the moment, A-level students helping out in vacation programmes as translators. But we're very keen to provide students with, with lots of opportunities for, for personal development. We really do believe in that uh, holistic aspect of learning. Uh, yes, exams are really important. But actually, the growth of the individual is equally important to ensure a strong transition into, into university. Clubs and society, sport, exercise, we believe all of these are key attributes that uh, for students to develop. There's no doubt that our enrichment programme was curtailed over the last two years during the pandemic, but certainly has been uh, uh, developed further and will be back in full with even new uh, 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 options from September. So I look forward to, to seeing that uh, uh, across the whole range. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, back to Nicola. So the next question we've got is, how and when will, will specific support be discussed for students with additional learning needs? Oh, okay, thank you for that question. Um, so initial information um, is gathered at the application stage. So we will already have um, information on particular additional learning needs, um, which will be furthered again at enrolment. But in the meantime, depending on the different types of additional learning needs, um, conversations have already begun and support mechanisms put in place. Um, when you do come to enrolment, that's when we shape up exactly what is required. Um, for students who have had access arrangements um, at for exams at GCSE, they need to be supported, obviously, through our additional learning support team, um, but they also need to be reassessed once you move in out of the secondary sector into the post-16, um, those exam access arrangements need to be reassessed um, and, re and confirmed. And so that's a process that goes on and finishes at February in preparation for um, future exams and assessments. Thank you, Nicola. Um, no, I feel that this one must be best suited to yourself as well. Um, will I get a tour of the college when I start? Yes, absolutely. That's on the Wednesday, the 7th of September, and I have got the right date on that one, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yes, that's part of that morning induction. Great, thank you. Um, Pete, over to you. So uh, what does the college do if a student falls behind, struggles to attend lessons? OK, thank you. Um, yes, well, it can happen, but there's plenty of support um, on offer through the college. Um, so we use a supportive intervention system um, called Back on Track, um, and that process is designed to do just that, to help students catch up on anything they've missed and give them every chance to succeed. Um, and the process is based around target setting. So there's a series of stages, um, and we begin with, the, uh, with your son or daughter's uh, tutor. And who will obviously have a conversation about things, uh, try and work out um, what the sort of reasons for any uh, sort of struggles are um, and put some targets in place. Um, and then we also involve our brilliant student progress mentors um, who are non-teaching staff um, who uh, will then invite um, parents or carers in for any meetings uh, with students who, uh, who might uh, need some additional support um, too. Um, and then we'll put targets in place um, and we see lots of students really benefit from that and, uh, and get them back on track with their, their studies. Um, we also have um, a superb academic learning support department too um, and many many A-level um, students 
um, a benefit from that of all abilities. Um, and at any time during the course of their studies, we can make a referral to academic learning support um, and uh, their students can benefit from individual or small group um, extra sessions. Um, and that can just be for a targeted period of time um, or it can be for a more extended sort of period um, to, to help students um, if, uh, if they need to. So um, we maintain really, really excellent communication with parents and carers um, throughout that process. Um, and also uh, we see lots of success where we put some intervention in place um, and students come out and do superbly well um, as a result of that. Great, thank you, thank you for that, Pete. Um, so Nicola, do students need laptops for classes? Um, they don't need them, but they're very welcome to bring them in if they wish. Um, obviously, some classes are timetabled in IT rooms because it's an essential part of um, studying and learning. Um, but most are in classrooms of different shapes and sizes. And we have Chromebooks um, that students use at different points in the lessons um, or sometimes we do ask students to get their phones out of their bags um, and use them for cahoots and jam boards and that type of thing and um, so all of those activities we will provide the technology but if a student has their own laptop and they want to bring it then then that's great but one thing I would say is that most A levels are assessed um, on paper in an exam, so we do need to provide enough handwriting practice throughout the two years. Thank you, Nicola. Um, and Pete, uh, how do you use Google for Education to embed digital learning at the college? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Google for Education is, uh, is absolutely embedded in all, all subjects. Um, and we use Google Classroom as our primary tool of that, and it acts as both a repository, i.e. to put all of the, uh, the materials and resources on so that students can access those um, during their study periods um, and indeed later on in their course, but also as a really interactive teaching resource. So teachers um, post all materials, PowerPoints and presentations and, uh, and documents and so on on their Google Classrooms um, week by week and lesson by lesson, uh, but also communicate news, events, reminders to students. And we also use Google Classroom um, for assignment and um, completion um, and indeed marking as well um, and um, lots of students really enjoy that it means that um, they're able to really embrace a sort of flexible working in their study periods and they're able to work uh, across any device um, and still access their, their work from anywhere um, at any time as well so students are all provided with unlimited google drive storage um, and uh, therefore can share documents with staff for feedback and marking. Um, and we use um, the wider Google suite in teaching as well. So um, Jamboards, for example, are regularly um, embedded um, as a way to, uh, for students to interact um, in lessons as well. Um, and um, students are guided on how to use Google for education if that's new to them through our tutorial program um, and can access plenty of support on that. So Google Lib for Education has been a fantastic resource for us um, and uh, it's one that we find that students really, really enjoy. Great, thank you very much, Pete. And I think this may be the last question we've got that's popped up. Um, so Nicola, how do I sign up to the enrichment activities? Oh, um, at the Freshers Fair, Tuesday, um, September the 20th at Havant and Tuesday, uh, sorry, Wednesday, September the 21st at Alton. Um, for all, all extracurricular enrichment activities, apart from team sports, and those we'd like you to sign up for, um, we'd like students to sign up for at enrolment. Um, the only other difference is with the Be Aspirational programme, which we launched just a little bit later. So we'll launch that towards the end of October, once students have found their feet and got settled into their key core studies. Um, and information about that will come round via tutorial and how to sign up um, at that point, just before uh, the end of October. Great, thank you very much, Nicola. So I think that concludes um, our presentation this evening. Uh, Mike, Nicola, Pete, is there anything else you would like to add before we end? I think I'd just like to say, well, one, thank you to everyone who's, who's joined in to listen. I think the other thing I would uh, uh, really, two things I'd press on, the importance of the triumvirate relationship between you as parents, your son and daughter as a student at the college, and with the, the teacher and, and tutor. That trauma relationship is, is, is so important in terms of giving students the right experience, the right courage uh, and resilience and belief in themselves to actually fulfill their potential. And we very much pride ourselves in that. And the other thing I would say lastly is that whatever the envelope says or however you get your results on the 25th of August, uh, um, there are always options. Uh, um, all of us have been through a challenging time in the last two years. 
and our, uh, uh, you know, our sons and daughters are no different in that. Uh, um, and I think, you know, we don't know what some of those outcomes will be on 25th of August. There'll be uh, great successes, no doubt, but there may be one or two disappointments. Uh, um, I would always say that isn't the end of the journey. There are always options open to, uh, to young people. The important thing is you come in and talk with us to look at what those options are. Uh, um, and I wish them well in their exams, lastly, and look forward to seeing them uh, in, at the end of August, beginning of September. Thank you. And that's it then. Thank you very much for joining us all this evening. Um, so we're just going to wait for a moment. We're going to mute, mute ourselves and turn the cameras off just while we answer those last few questions in the Q&A. But um, thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing your um, sons and daughters in, in September. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.